Hi everyone, we're back with the second part of our series, Conversations with a Master Bow Maker with Young Chen. And for the next two episodes, Young is going to talk about wood. Now, if that makes you want to roll your eyes and click on something else, stop that because we're not just talking about wood, we're talking about everything that makes a bow possible. If you're an instrumentalist, just stop and think. How much have you actually thought about the process that went into that bow that you're holding every day? Where did the wood come from? It had to have grown somewhere and not just sprung up fully formed as a bow. So listen in and I promise you, you'll learn something new. On another note, our Brahms album will be coming out on April 1st and I'm here to remind you of the fact. Be sure to tune in on Apple Music or Spotify or whatever. And enough from me, now let's hear from Young. And if you enjoy this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Cheers. When you look at wood, when you find wood, what are you looking for? You gotta be more specific okay, on right. the question. Um, Pernambuco is, is the wood that a lot of the finer bows are made from. When you're looking just at Pernambuco, what are you looking for in a... In, a, in the raw form? In the raw form, yeah. Okay, so let's qualify this. I'm, I'm looking at Pernambuco in the raw form and the wood is dried. Okay, I'm looking at boards. That's just boards or sticks. Let's just put it this way because when you, that's basically how you can, you, well now basically you can only get sticks today. But when I first got this, you could buy it in the raw form and it was pretty wet. So it's a different ball game. So for the sake of what you just asked, we're going to say it's dry wood in the stick form. Okay, so I do look for certain physical characteristics no matter what the color of the wood is um, and how it weighs. And when you pick up a stick, you can, you can feel a certain thing. But I look for physical characteristics, the length of the grain. I look to see if there's run out, mean, run out meaning uh, is the grain going basically along the stick or does it run out and angle, which many old bows did, which is because uh, of various reasons. Uh, and then, of course, I'm just looking at the physical condition of the stick, too. Um, but then it's up to you to figure out what is the best way to maximize that stick. Okay? I'm going to repeat this again. The best way for you to maximize what that stick has, it's, the stick actually imposes on you. You don't impose on the stick. Okay? Especially when you're working with really um, high, high grade, high quality sticks. I think uh, because number one, they're not cheap, these blanks, and they are of a limited resource. So I think it's, I feel pretty strongly about what I just said. Yeah, that's sort of in the same way as saying if you have a block of marble and you don't want to impose on the marble, you want to bring, bring what you can out of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and when you talk about um, this is going back to basics because obviously, you know, we play our instruments, we play our bows, and we play our violins to find out, you, you know, nothing about the creation of them. So when you're talking about sticks versus the boards, what, what, what is a stick? I mean, is it just, obviously it's not like how it, it is that I see yeah. right now. In the corner, give me a couple of those. Is this? Yeah. Oh, here we go. <laughs> so this stick came from a board, right? Okay. So they're cut out. Okay, so when I used to buy the wood, when it was wet, okay, okay let's, meaning that it was very fresh wood, you have to season the wood. These, this wood comes from the, the Mata Atlantic Forest of Brazil, which is the forest along the Atlantic Ocean from around Rio up to Paraíba, one state north of Pernambuco. Pernambuco state is the easternmost part of Brazil when it sticks out into the Atlantic. Okay. At that point there, the city is called Recife. And uh, the, the ex-president Lula was from Pernambuco state. So this wood, when you get it before, when we got it before, it was quite fresh. And uh, we actually had trunks of it, okay, like a tree trunk. Uh -huh. So if this was a uh, if this was a tree, mm -hmm. 
of Pernambuco, what we use is the heartwood, this dark part, which okay. forms after 10 or 11 years after the tree starts growing. So that if, if this is the tree, then what happens, it's cut into boards, and after the boards, they come into sticks. When I used to get the wood, it used to be round. Okay. Okay, and then we have to cut the boards, and then along the way, though, you have to let the humidity and the water evaporate slowly, otherwise you get a lot of checking, a lot of cracks in the wood. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't buy wood anymore. I have, I, I, I have enough, and plus it's uh, a protected species. But now, basically, you can only buy sticks on the market. So again, you ask what I look for. For instance, I look at this. This has got a, a knot here, which is cracked, so I, I couldn't use this, right? Uh -huh. So the physical aspects of looking at a bow first, mm -hmm. it, it tells you certain, right there, aspects, certain things, OK? After it, you have a stick, you plane it down into this. I start making it into an octagon. Take off at the head. And then you take it down further. After we do it, we start to put the, the graduations are done rough. Carve out the back of the head, and I bend the stick. The stick is bent with dry heat. I use an alcohol lamp. Now, some people used uh, charcoal, charcoal wood. Um, some people used paint dryers uh, to, to bend the stick. And I, I'll say this, I don't know if one is better than the other, it's whatever works for you. So then we, so when you see a bow with the curve, that is generally put in with heat. Right behind the head here, we might just start the curve slightly with removing a little wood to give you this little dip. Two things. Um, you mentioned that, so now you can only get it in this stick form. You used to get boards. What what changed that you can't, why can't you get boards anymore? Ah, okay. <laughs> Struck on something good. So in 1991, uh -huh. actually, Pernambuco, Pernambuco was put on a protected list in Brazil and is actually the national tree of Brazil. In Portuguese, as you know, Brazil is a Portuguese colony, the only colony in South America that's Portuguese. And that's another story that was because they wanted to con the Portuguese wanted to control the slave trade. Uh, okay. But um, in 1991, it was made the national tree, and it was on a protected list. So it has an, uh, a certain listing within CITES uh, of a protected species. So as time has gone on now, since this period of time, um, the Atlantic, Mata Atlantic Forest, which again is along the coast of Brazil, mm -hmm. where 70% of the population of Brazil lives within 100 kilometers of the ocean. That's the exact range of the Mata Atlantic Forest. So this wood, a lot of it has disappeared, mostly because of expansion of uh, the human element and having uh, pasteurizations, converting certain uh, uh, areas down there for the eucalyptus trade, which is huge in pulp production. The biggest pulp production plants in the world are in Brazil. In the mid-90s, we started to hear that Brazil was going to uh, potentially ban the exportation of Pernambuco. Well, Pernambuco has been used in bow making since the mid-1600s. And it is the best material, bar none. So actually, the bow makers started a program of reforestation in Brazil in the early 2000s called the uh, Programa Paul uh, Programa Paul Brazil. And uh, I was very uh, involved with creation, creating this program, and, and which still exists today. And so far, we've. We have been responsible for planting about 250,000 seedlings in Brazil. So we enacted a program with, with, uh, with the federal government, state agencies, NGOs, a private partnership. And uh, we had a plan that uh, for five years, we did not meet all our goals, 
but we were able to be responsible again for 250,000 trees and that one picture you see when you come in was a tree that was planted from 2005 and that was taken in 2018 and we know that if trees are pruned a certain way and taken care of we can get a result within 35 to 40 years after planting as opposed to 80 to 100 years so our goal for this this program was to try to create a, a legal sustainable a source of permanent vehicle for future generations of bow makers and multiple people like yourself the players and so far we're on we're on target because the trees are growing quite nicely well, that's fantastic